Welcome back guys to another Cycraft episode. So we're still in the consolidation phase where we build smaller farms just to get started so we can do the really cool projects later. For example, we don't even have yeah stained glass yet in all colors or uh, yeah, color terracotta and so on. Um, we're really struggling with everything right now. Um, so in the last episode we already started making a cocoa bean farm. So we can already dye our glass brown, but there's a lot of other colors that we still need to cover. For example, yeah, we can also make white glass, but gray is already a bit of an issue. We don't have any either wither rose farm or squid farm yet for black dye. We have a bit of lapis, so that's pretty nice, but it's kind of a waste to use the lapis for that. Yeah, cactus also something needs to be worked on, but I guess the biggest progress could be made right now by just having all the flower farms. Okay, um, so the plan for today is to work on some flower farms. Probably nothing too crazy, just something to get started. There's a lot we could do with automatic bone meal, refilling, chunk loading and whatnot, but yeah, this will all be part of the episodes later. Then the projects will be more decorated and also a bit, a bit more sophisticated and larger in general. But yeah, keep in mind, we also have to start somewhere. Okay, so I already looked up a flower forest biome that is only about 2,000 blocks away. So we need to fly to set coordinates 89,600. So it should be towards the mushroom farm actually. Let's see if we can find it. This X coordinates... Yeah, uh, minus 28,700, a bit to that direction. Oh, I think it's actually behind the stone generator complex. See. Ah, yeah, here it is, the flower forest biome. Actually, I completely missed this when building the stone generator over there. It almost doesn't really pop out anymore compared to like the meadows biomes and so on. Almost blends in, but I remember in older versions, you definitely notice the flower biome. Anyway, so the plan is definitely to build a flower farm for each type of flower because it's yeah, just nicer if you need a certain type of dye so you can only focus on getting certain flowers. Otherwise, um, yeah, I, I did it once. I tried to have as many flowers as possible inside of one farm. Then, you, then you, I only got like 5% orange tulips. And then later, um, when I actually need a lot of orange dye, then... I had to run the flower farm forever to actually get a decent amount. So yeah, probably a bit smaller flower farm for each flower type is the goal. But you might also be asking why still the yeah, flower forest biome, not maybe for example the meadows biome. That would also be an option. There's also the, of course the plains biome, the sunflower plains biome, and the new meadows biome. Because if you look at that, there's actually huge patches of, for example, dandelions here. I think this is a meadows biome. Check it out, F3. Yeah, meadow. Yeah, this would here be perfect. We have huge patches of only yellow flowers, but as far as I know, there's this, always this flower gradient. If you would actually bone mill here, we would get all kinds of flowers. Well, yeah, in the flower forest biome, we have the nice gradient where only a single type grows. So let's actually quickly go to creative and confirm that. I was actually wrong about the meadow biome. Good that we double checked. So got a little setup here that bone meal is the grass blocks and then yeah, removes all the grass so only the flowers are left over and there's actually huge patches of dandelions. I think in the meadows biome you can also find almost all the other types you could find in a flower forest biome in large patches except lily of the valley and the tulips. Okay, but um, I also checked the, the flower forest biome again here in the back. There's actually huge patches of pretty much all the flowers. Um, we actually don't need to you know, farm each flower type really. You will need to get the ones that supply us with a certain dye. For example, the ox eye daisy and the white tulip and the uh, azure bluette all would give you a gray dye. Uh, so I don't really see a point right now um, to make a farm for each flower type. Later we can do that as completionists, but for now I think we're just gonna focus on the on the dyes. Also, of course, um, there's orange tulips, but also yeah, we can combine 
yellow and red dye. But I'd say we still make an orange flower farm just because it's way more convenient to craft the orange dye directly. Okay, uh, what I actually didn't find here in this flower forest was a lily of the valley. Looked around quite a bit, but it didn't generate here. I'm actually not sure if they generate in the flower forest biome or only in certain spots. Could have expanded the test area a little bit further to this side, but also don't see a lily of the valley here. Maybe they're quite rare. There were also, in addition, there was added after 1.12, so I'm not too knowledgeable about it. So I checked in a different flower forest biome, there was a lily of the valley patch, but since you can only get white dye from the lily of the valley, um, don't think we need this actually, because we can get white dye from bone meal, of course. All right, then let's actually make a list of the flowers we really need. All right, so it looks like we're gonna need eight yeah, flower farms. Um, blue orchard from the swamp biome for the light blue dye, then the line for yellow, pink tulip for pink, oxidase for light gray, Although here we had a lot of other choices, cornflower for blue, orange tulip for orange, poppy for red, although there are iron farms of course, but yeah, for now I think a flower farm is a good choice, and then allium for magenta. Um, we're actually kind of lucky, our dandelion spot in the flower forest is very small and not even square, but the metals biome meta is real, so we can just build it here in this biome, dandelion farm will go over here. Okay, let's design a farm real quick. It's not super complicated, but there's a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Like for example, we definitely want to compost the seeds we get to yeah, get a little bit of bone meal back that we can yeah, feed back into the farm. Then we have to do all the plumbing, move items around, shulker unloaders, etc. Um, also, the yeah, size of the farm needs to be selected. I think I'm going to go with seven by eight because this should cover the flower patches. If we would go larger, then we probably would have issues and get mixed flowers. Although the efficiency is slightly higher, the larger you go, but there's not much of a difference. So with the 7x8 here, you get like, I think it was 90,000 items per hour. Next bigger one, 9x10, I think it was 94. Then 11x12 was 95. And yeah, the theoretical 15x16 here with a higher push limit was like 96,000. So like 5% difference, 7x8. Uh, is fine, we lose a bit of efficiency, but yeah, then at least we don't need to deal yeah, with mixed flowers and all of that. All right, um, yeah, just let's get started. First thing we actually need to worry about is item collection. So there's basically three ways we can do it. Uh, we could stop shifting of the floor and flush the items over. This takes a while, in the meantime, yeah, we can't get more flowers. There's a second approach, we have like solid blocks above the farm and push them down to get the item elevator effect. Uh, one little downside is we can't generate tall grass, so I think we should get fewer seeds. And we also have to stop the shifting of the floor. The third option is actually to use minecarts, and especially in 1.19, which is kind of the, the hopper minecart update. Um, it seems like this might be a viable option again. So it has the advantage that we don't need to stop the shifting floor at all every so often. Um, we don't have the build-up of the items, so it should be less laggy, I hope even. But there's one downside. The items that land on the grass block on top of the dispenser aren't picked up by the hopper minecarts below. So we got rails there, hopper minecarts, yeah, collecting everything except that one spot. So what we can do is we can put in a hopper minecart inside of the grass block, maybe then just um, align it a little bit to the side, so two hopper minecarts also would take out items out of that hopper minecart. So basically the idea is the one that goes you know, here against the dispenser would pick up items and the one on the side. But I'm not entirely sure if this will be enough to get all the items out of the hopper minecart in time. Mm, if not, then we need to be a bit more creative what to do with that. Okay, let's align the hopper minecart first. We're just going to use honey blocks. And then I just push this over. Okay. Then we can drop the minecart down. And then we just have to push in the grass blocks again. Also this one here.
And I hope this still works here, the dispensing. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, okay. So this works. Then I'm gonna just continue the wiring real quick. Gonna set up the farm and also the hopper minecart unloading already. And then we can check what's left over in that hopper minecart in the end. Never mind, that won't work. As soon as the blocks are actually shifted, the minecart is actually pushed off. Oof. It's gonna be trickier than I thought. And indeed, this problem was very tricky to solve. So I tried around for about two hours to come up with some kind of solution. Had all kinds of complicated setups, but in the end, some good outside the box thinking actually was the solution. So we got a yeah, really simple setup that deals with the problem perfectly. So this is something that I asked the other side crafters for ideas for, and then to no suggested to use boats. And that works surprisingly well. So we got three boats inside the glass box that are stacked perfectly on top of each other to not create any latches for items to land on. So what the boats are doing is any item they would yeah, generate basically inside of the boat here on top of the grass block um, will be pushed to the side. That's one of the yeah, features of boats. They push entities to the side. You sometimes also use it, for example, to push boats, uh, sorry, uh, entities outside of a nether portal with boats. And yeah, here we use it for items. Okay, we can also turn this on. They signed the rest of the farm already as well. But then here we just got my cuts yeah, going below. Had to make a turn here to yeah, deal with the dispenser still. And let's take a look inside. You see, no items there. And if you take a look at the grass block, yeah, sometimes grass would generate above it. Okay, so we got a 100% efficient setup, so we never have to stop this grass platform from shifting to flush the items. We ran out of bone meal. <laughs> okay, um, let's put in more. To flush the items or push down blocks from above for the item elevator effect, so we can just keep this running without any interruptions. Also, the items are picked up pretty quickly by the minecarts. So not a lot of time is lost there. So the more items you have, of course, the more lag you cause. In case you, for example, decide to flush the items, then you have a lot of items sitting around for one minute. Well, here we pick them up immediately and send them yeah, into the water stream here. So let's also go through the rest of the farm. Um, here we would have an item filter. I didn't assign it yet. Yeah, it's just for the creative world. So this would then be just for a single flower type. And everything else, so basically yeah, only the seeds ideally, in case we didn't make a mistake, would be composted. So you got a little composter set up and that feeds some bone meal back. So through this yeah, hopper line, up the dropper and here we got a chest um, that would be fed from on top. Um, so the way the update order works, if this chest is completely filled up and we got some bone meal on top and we got some bone meal in here. Um, because of the update order, the hopper on top has priority over the hopper from the side. So we basically prefer the bone meal coming directly from the farm over the bone meal from the shulker box unloader, which we have here. So yeah, this way none of that bone meal will be lost. Um, if you wouldn't deal with the update order in some way, then it could happen that this hopper line would be preferred. And then your bone meal from the farm keeps piling up while we resupply from the shulker box, of course. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. So here we have also the yeah, filter system and shulker loader for the flowers. Yeah, we can definitely build it in survival. But there's another issue that was pointed out to me. So this yeah, flower forest pattern used to be basically two-dimensional, but with the changes in 1.18 with the 3D biomes, it's no longer the case. So the work we just did, picking locations, um, probably was for nothing because we need to actually uh, consider every single block now. So we have to find new spots. Oh yeah, one more thing, if you want to know how to stack those boats on top of each other perfectly, you need to use a dispenser. So. Um, this is the setup I quickly came up with. I'm not sure if there's a better one. So you can just put like two boats in there. This will be in the grass block later. 
And uh, waterlocked leaves on top, give him dispense once and twice, but unfortunately not a third time. But if what he can do is get a bucket, break this, and then just do it again from above. Get another waterlocked leaf. Activate it. Bucket, break, then you have three boats perfectly stacked on top of each other. Okay. Okay, now about our flower pattern issue that is 3D now instead of 2D, like in older versions. It's actually also an opportunity because you could actually like stack different flower farms on top of each other. But I think it's rather unlikely that we actually find a good spot where we have a 7 by 9 um, of a single flower type and then a couple blocks higher we have a yeah, equally large area of another single flower type. So this is rather unlikely and what also is kind of tricky is now to uh, match, at least in a test world here, the flower pattern to the surface level to build the flower form at a nice elevation directly on ground. Um, so that's why I decided, at least for the flower forest, we're just gonna do it underground. So here I caved out this area, found some nice patterns where we can put farms all at the same height. I think at some point, um, if we build like nicer flower farms, we can go a little bit more in detail and find better spots on. But we kind of need to finish this now. Okay, so I also redecided which type of flower farms we want. So here in the flower forest, we're only gonna have farms for uh, tulips, orange one, red one, and the pink one. Then this type of flower, the allium, we're gonna build in a meadow biome, dandelion as well, and then just a blue orchid in a swamp biome. So six flower farms in total. All right, so let's hop over to yeah, survival and build all of those farms. Alright, I just grabbed some bone meal from the moss farm and yeah, here we can see one of the six flower farms running right now. This is the one in the swamp biome. Let's also check out the other five. Alright, so here's the flower farm for the grey dye in a meadows biome. And just a couple blocks over we get the meadows biome of the dandelion. Uh, we can see it over there. There's the beacon and the flower farm for dandelion. Totally actually remembered that we should also make one for cornflowers for blue dye. We completely forgot about that. So this is a dandelion farm. You can see yellow flowers around. And now let's try to get over to the flower forest. There we have the tulip farms. Yeah, totally forgot about the cornflowers. We need to build another farm. I haven't really seen a meadows biome that has cornflower yet. Maybe we can find one. Oh, we also build it underground here in the flower forest area. Okay. Here's the way yeah, down to the tulip farms. 
we run this already? Yeah, this was for Red Tulip. This one actually I ran a lot. We have over 100,000 pink tulips. I already brought that over to storage. And there's still some left over here. Oh, seems like a glass block got in there somehow. Interesting. Probably during the building process one. I got stuck somewhere. And this was one for the orange tulips. Yeah, totally didn't build a cornflower farm for blue dye, which really technically you have the lapis um, farm as well with the villager gifting. But of course, yeah, we'd rather craft lapis blocks, I guess, out of our lapis dust than use it for blue dye. And yeah, as you can see, this doesn't take too long to build those flower farms. And they're really inexpensive to run with the bone mill. All right, so that's all for today. In between episodes, I definitely search for a spot for the corn flowers so you can get blue dye from them. And we need a couple more farms, for example, cocoa bean for brown dye, cacti for cactus green. And technically a sea pickle farm for lime dye directly, instead of combining cactus green and white dye, I guess that would also work. Alright, um, that's going to be done in one of the next episodes for sure. Thanks so much guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.